Hello friends, this video on reproduction in animals part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us quickly look at the exact process how sperms are produced. So since you have understood the different parts, so you would have guessed it that how exactly it gets produced. Now as I have mentioned before that sperms are produced in the testis. So what is there in the testis where the sperms are produced? Let's have a look. So this is how the sperms look like. So now let us look at the entire picture of the male reproductive system so that it becomes easier to understand. Now what is there inside the testis? Now as I said that testis is made up of coiled tubules. So there are many coiled tubules like this and these tubules are lined by epithelial cells. So these epithelial cells, from these cells only, the sperms are produced. You will be surprised to know that almost 12 billion sperms are produced per month. So in a month, a male person can produce around 12 billion sperms. But does that mean that every sperm will go and fuse with a female sex cell and a baby will be born? No. That's not the case. So we will see what happens even though the number of sperms which are produced are large but still the actual fusion which takes place that is very very less compared to the number of sperms. So we will talk about that a little later. So now uh, how it is produced in the testis from the epithelial cells, the epithelial cells lining the coiled tubules, lining the coiled tubules inside the testis. So a large number of sperms are produced. Now these sperms will move from testis to epididymis. So where is epididymis? So, so somewhere here, so this is your testis. So in this testis you have these tubules where the sperms get produced. Now when this, once the sperms become mature, they will move into the epididymis. So epididymis is this coiled part of the tube. So from epididymis then it will move to the vas deferens. So from epididymis it goes into the vas deferens that is this tube like structure. From vas deferens, it will pass on through the seminal vesicle. So here you have the seminal vesicle. Now as the sperms passes through this, seminal vesicle will also give its secretion. So seminal vesicle will secrete, just now I, we were talking right, that seminal vesicle will secrete some viscous fluid. So it will also give its viscous fluid through this seminal duct. So there is a tube which connects the seminal vesicle to this vas deferens. So through this seminal duct, it will pass on its secretion and this seminal duct will combine with the vas deferens and they will form the ejaculatory duct. So this one which you see here, this is the seminal duct. That is the duct connecting the seminal vesicle with this main tube. And after that it forms the ejaculatory duct. Duct is a tube, ejaculatory means this tube is going to ejaculate the entire thing to the exterior. Now it again passes and then comes the prostate gland. So the prostate gland will also pour its secretion into the ejaculatory duct. And then finally, this ejaculatory duct is containing what? So, the, even the urinal coming from the urinary bladder, that also combines with this and they form a common passage. So, now in this passage, what do you have? You have sperms plus secretion from seminal vesicle plus secretion from the prostate gland plus secretion from the Cowper's gland. So, you have all the secretions. That is, you have the seminal plasma plus the sperms and then that will be ejaculated out through the urethra. Now the question is, when will it be ejaculated out? So this is the path which the sperms will follow. Now the question is, when will it be ejaculated out? Now that is why we have this structure called penis which is muscular in nature. Now whenever the penis is stimulated, what happens is it gets filled with blood. Now when it gets filled with blood, it becomes erect. It becomes quite stiff and erect. Now that is the advantage of the penis being made up of smooth muscles. So otherwise it remains soft but when it becomes filled with fluid, it becomes erect. Now when it becomes erect, it becomes easy to insert it into the female body. 
through the vagina. So in the female reproductive structure, we will see that there is an opening called vagina through which this penis can be inserted in. Now when the penis is inserted in, what happens is this entire fluid which contains the sperm, the entire liquid mixture that is sperm plus the seminal plasma. So all of this enter inside the female reproductive system. And from there on what happens that we will talk later. So this is how the sperms are produced. Now of the millions of sperms which get ejaculated, now as I said, here some billions of sperms get produced. But by the time the sperms get ejaculated, there also you have maybe some millions of sperms, some 300 million sperms get ejaculated. But out of that, some 200 or so are able to survive to reach the female sex cell. That is so surprising. So you had millions of sperms which got ejaculated. So those which came out were also in millions. But by the time it would meet the uh, female sex cell, it was only 200 or so, maybe 100, 200 or 300. And finally, there is just one sperm which becomes successful to fuse the female sex cell. So even though there are billions and millions of sperm cells which are getting produced or which are getting ejaculated, but there is just one sperm cell which is finally successful in causing fertilization. Now, what happens to the rest of the cells? Now, all these mystery lies inside the female reproductive system. So, when we discuss the female reproductive system, we will get to know that how the uh, count or why the survival rate of the sperm decreases as it moves through the female body. So, we will talk that a little later. So, I hope this is clear, the uh, different parts of the male reproductive system and how sperms are produced. So here you see in the testis the sperms get produced in the animation you can see how exactly it moves. Now as the sperms mature it reaches the epididymis from there it passes through the vas deferens and from the vas deferens it finally reaches the seminal vesicle as you can see here. In the seminal vesicle the seminal vesicle secretes its viscous fluid through the seminal duct which joins the ejaculatory duct. From there it reaches the prostate gland. So there the prostate gland also give it secretion. So now we have the sperms plus the secretion from all the glands. Then it finally joins the ureter and then passes through the ureter, urethra and then thrown out of the body. Thrown out in the sense then it is uh, in injected or inserted into the female's body. So that how, that's how sperms get ejaculated. So now let us talk about the structure of a sperm because we saw that sperms are the male sex cell and they are capable of moving from one place to another. So let's look at its structure. So these are tiny bodies with long tail. So whenever you look at the structure of the sperm, tail is most important because mobility is the most desired characteristic of a sperm. And size-wise, I mentioned to you before also that the female sex cell is quite bigger when compared to the male sex cell. So these are tiny, but they have a long tail. So here you can see the tail is quite big. So this entire thing is tail. And this portion is the head of the sperm. So this part is the head. And then this middle part is the neck. So it is mainly composed of genetic material. So if you look at the head of the sperm, so this part is the head of the sperm and inside the head this big structure which you see that is nucleus. So we can say that a major portion of its head is composed of nucleus and what is nucleus? Nucleus contains the genetic material. If you remember, uh, whatever we have discussed in the lesson on cell, we spoke about this that the nucleus inside, uh, the, the cell has a nucleus, inside the nucleus are the chromosomes and the chromosomes contain DNA which is the genetic material. So it contains the genetic material. So also here the different parts which we can see, so this part is the head, this part portion is the neck. And this part which you see here, this is called the middle piece. 
So these are the different parts of a sperm. Now the most important, the two most important parts are the nucleus which contains the genetic material because when this sperm will fuse with the female sex cell, so this sperm is going to give all the traits or the genes of the father and the female sex cell is going to give all the traits of the mother and that is how the baby is going to have some traits of father, some traits of mother. And the next important part is the tail because it helps in mobility. It helps it to move from one place to another. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.